Wearing the sparkling blue with pink trim. On the scales, nine stone and nine ounces, or 126 pounds and nine ounces. From 40 contests, 35 wins. 13 wins coming by KO, four defeats, one draw. He is the former IBF international and European featherweight champion and world title challenger. From Charleville, Mezier, Ardennes, France, Sofiane, babyface, Takoust. And across the ring in the blue corner, winning the green tartan shorts trim with gold on the scales, nine stone and four ounces, or 126 pounds, four ounces. A two times Olympian as an amateur, European, Commonwealth, and world gold medalist. As a professional, a perfect record. 13 contests, 13 wins, 7 wins by KO. He is the WBO Intercontinental Featherweight Champion from Belfast, representing all of Ireland, Michael Conlon. Don't throw punches on the back of the head. You protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Trey, we have spent plenty of time with Mick Conlon through the years to understand where he is mentally, where he is physically each time he goes into a fight. Our visit with Mick Conlon two nights ago had us thinking how much actually the time off served him in a strange way because he feels... He got back to being a normal person in many ways, being inspired to run when he wanted to run, not because he had to run, not for the sake of doing it, to train the way he wanted to train. He described it as a great reset for him in the midst of this stage of his career. Absolutely, and resets for an athlete are necessary. Our whole lives, if you started at a young age, is, is redundant, and you do the same thing every single day. And, you know, people come up with these sayings like no days off, and that's not a reality. You need days off as an athlete, as a fighter. You have to go out there and take a walk and enjoy your family and forget about the sport for a season so you can come back with a greater love for it. And that sounds like the case with Michael Conlon. Timmy, you see him switching stances right away. And from that southpaw stance, he was able to land a right hook to the body of Takush. Yeah, Conlon can fight from the orthodox stance, meaning the right stance, or he also can switch southpaw. That's the beauty with Conlon. And he also understands how to fight inside the pocket and outside the pocket. There's a lot to like about Conlon and, you know, just like my man Mark said, I, I just want to see him develop a little bit more killer instinct and get that knockout. He's hitting these guys hard, but I want to see if he can get these guys up out of there. Conlon. Okay, it's going in and out sometimes. Conlon targeting the body early. Since the Joe, I like what Conlon is doing right now. He's facing a very, very awkward fighter in Takush, but he's not allowing Takush to dictate the fight. And sometimes when you face an awkward fighter, especially a left-hander, you can find yourself looking and feeling awkward. He's not allowing that to happen. He's taking the fight in a smart way to Takush, and you see the dividends paying off even early in this fight. Yeah, he falls in line with just, your scouting report, Dre. When we asked him about Takush, he said he isn't as dangerous as much as he's simply awkward. He really doesn't have a rhythm. What I like about what Colin is doing against Takush, Takush, what he's doing is he's attacking him. You know, he's trying to remind him Takush was knocked out in his last fight. He's trying to take him back to that place. You know, because a fighter don't forget what happens in the ring. Trust me on that. Jab and a left hand to the body, and then a warning with that other body shot as we come to the end of round number one from the historic round number two here of Mick Conlon and Sofian Takush. Sofian Takush, 34 year old from France, was blasted out in the second round of his last fight. That's when Josh Warrington had a straight right that floored him. 
Then a two-punch combination that started with a left hook. And Takush absorbed some headshots after the second knockdown. He was sent spinning around, and the referee stopped the fight back on October 12th of 2019 when he was challenging for the IBF featherweight title. Joe, Takush is not just an awkward fighter. Like, he got knocked out in a crazy way. He got knocked out awkwardly. I've never seen a fighter get knocked out like that. I, Dre, I completely agree. I was watching the film a few weeks ago just to go back and see it again, and, and then you recall the way he spun there when he was absorbing the headshots with the second knocked. I agree. Everything was awkward about that night. But, you know, it's interesting, oh Timmy, because when you reflect on that night, you just don't have good feelings coming into this fight for what Takush would be able to get done. That's exactly but the Conlon camp disagrees. Uh, J both, you know, when you talk to Mick and you talk to his brother and manager, Jamie, they say, listen, Takush really could be one of the tougher opponents because he's been around. He's a veteran. And then when they look at the Warrington fight, they said he had a horrible training camp, that he changed trainers mid-camp because of it. And they really marked that down for his performance. Look, I don't care how Takush look right now. I mean, look, he has racked up 35 wins. He must be respected. That tells me something. Joe, what you heard from the Conlon camp is professionalism. Yes. And that's why he's going to two Olympics. He's medaled at one. And that's why he's in line to fight for a world title very soon because they approach every fight like that. You always have to rate an opponent above even what maybe they in real in, in reality should be rated. Deep down, you know they can't de you can't deal with me when I'm at my best. But on the surface, you got to give them that respect. That's what gets you up early and keeps you late in that gym. That lead hand is sweeping nicely to the belt line from Mick Conlon. He has 14 body punches landed here as we're now in the final 30 seconds of round two. Well, Conlon has seemingly found the key, and I'm sure he's going to continue to go down there, and it's downstairs. The Cooch don't like it downstairs. Conlon off to a good start. End of two live from London. Conlon banking the first two rounds against Sofian Takush. Let's look at the CompuBox numbers. And Conlon right now has a 39 to 11 connect advantage, throwing 50 more punches than Takush as we start round number three. Scheduled for 10 before we get to the former fighter of the year, former two-division world champion, Carl Frampton, in our main event. Saturday afternoon boxing stateside, Saturday night, live in London from the tradition-rich York Hall. I love what I've seen from Michael Conlon so far in this fight. It's not just the punches he's landed because he hasn't really landed anything significant, but he's setting the table. It's the movement. It's the angles. You know, he's light on his feet. He's not allowing Takush to think or get comfortable. That's going to set the stage for a big shot to land down the stretch. And I like the fact that Conlon is, is southpaw. He chose to come out in this fight in a southpaw position because you got to understand that southpaws don't normally see other southpaws, so they're not they're not familiar with this, the stance and the punches coming from that angle. Very smart strategy from Conlon. Well, and there's that southpaw right hand, but that didn't look low to me at all. Now he's been digging to the body well, but another warning from Steve Gray, the referee. Goes underneath with a left hand the to the body. The ref's got to let these guys fight, Joe. I agree, Dre. Gotta, the ref's got to let these guys fight. Tess, you was talking about that, that right hand to the body from Conlon. The shot is available if he wants to open it up. He needs to go up top with a small look. Shot up top and then go down to the body. Bring the hands up at the cooch. Oh, 
I know everybody wants a knockout from Conlon in this fight, and I think he might get it at some point, but make no mistake about it, knocking a guy out like Takush with experience, a fighter who is awkward and one who is not trying to win, is not an easy feat and it's not an easy thing to do. Well, remember the warning we just saw moments ago, and now he's going to give him time for a low blow here as Takush heads to the neutral corner. Steve Gray, the referee assigned by the British board. Body work by Conlon. A little something extra after the bell to finish off the third round. So Steve Gray brings Conlon and Takush together here as we start round number four. Joe Tessitore alongside Tim Bradley, Andre Ward, and Mark Kriegel. Live fights from your call in London this afternoon. Carl Frampton still to come. To this point, you saw the warning for the low blow handed out to Mick Conlon, but he has landed 24 body shots among his 48 power punches landed. He's 48 of 132 on power shots today so far. Yeah, I haven't seen anything egregiously low. I I'm not sure why so many warnings for Conlon. Maybe, maybe one or two straight belt line. I think Conlon needs to focus on the game plan, and it looks like the game plan for Conlon and Booth is to go downstairs to slow up, you know, the twitchy to Koosh. He's got to stay focused on that. I can just see Conlon did his homework on Jakooch. Jakooch likes to have space. He likes to have space to work his hands. And Conlon saw what I saw in the video that he doesn't like the pressure. He doesn't like it inside the pocket. He doesn't like it inside that kitchen. And that's why you see Conlon putting a, a massive amount of pressure onto Cooch. And another body shot as he comes with the backhand. That left hand goes there again, right on the belt line. Left uppercut as well. That's the key right there, Tess. I said it. Conlon found the key. Now he switches orthodox. Back downstairs. And he's looking for a right hand, a straight right hand to the midsection. And he's able to land it. Now back to southpaw for Conlon. Left hand up top sends Takush off balance for a moment. It's not an easy thing to do what Conlon is doing right now, Joe. Just all the movement. He hasn't sat still for one second in this fight. He's given so many different looks. He's on his toes. He's switching righty, lefty. Like, he's showing us right now the type of shape that he's in and the type of focus that he has. There's no time for a mental let up if you're trying to go to the top and get a world title and keep it for a long time like Conlon is. Dre, the kind of shape he's in. How about when we visited with him the other night, we asked him, hey, what have you enjoyed during this time away? And I know you're anxious to get back. He said running half marathons. He was enjoying running half marathons in recent months. <laughs> but that's what I'm concerned about, Joe. I like him at 126. That's what he's fighting at tonight. I don't know how he's going to look in a tough fight if you carve off four more pounds off of that frame. That is the plan. They are deducting a point. Mm. I have no idea what's going on right now. Well, I Steve seen Gray. Low in the fight. Steve Gray has seen that. We haven't. So it's a point to think of Herring Frampton or maybe Burchelt Valdez. But this really portends something much more significant, which is MTK making a big move to manage American fighters. Last week they signed eight and no. Uh, Truck Simpson out of uh, Baltimore, supposed to be a great prospect. I'm old enough, I keep wanting to say Truck Robinson. This <laughs> week, it's Diaz. Jamie Conlon, the vice president of MTK, says they have about six or seven other American fighters almost signed 
and that could change the game a bit. Jamie Conlon, the older brother of Mick Conlon, the vice president, and in terms of development and resources, they are in prime position to be a top management group. So many great managers in the sport today that these fighters benefit from. And then, of course, MTK with the global relationship with top ranks. So you could have some fascinating showdowns, especially at 130 pounds, and one of them may be halfway set if Carl Frampton gets through Darren Trainer today and comes out clean. And then in a few weeks, we will see Jamel Herring's WBO championship defense when he fights Jonathan Akendo. Bob Arum says that will be a locked date in November. Frampton and Herring at 130 pounds for the BO title. But Jojo Diaz, it'll be interesting to see where he goes down the road. You mentioned Miguel Burchelt as well. Of course, Leo Santa Cruz has business coming up with Tank Davis. Now, what's going to happen here? Another low blow. Second point deduction. If you're Conlon right now, stay away from the body. Don't even go downstairs. Just throw nothing but headshots. Dre, you would have to think that his trainer, Adam Booth, would instruct him it's not worth risking the DQ. You're controlling the action. Stay away from that. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be able to completely stay away. He's a fighter. He's fighting off of instinct. So, you know, I I, I kind of disagree, fellas. I, I would say continue to be defiant about it, but you have to be smart. Maybe not punches, you know, up the middle where the referee can't see and Takush can sell it. But anything around the guard on the right side or left side, I think it's fair game. You're, you're dancing on the cliff's edge. Two-point deductions. You don't want to suffer a DQ loss here to a fighter that you're supposed to shine against. No, I understand, but it's tough. I mean, these guys, you can tell this is the oh, game is. plan yeah. for Conley. He didn't just come up with this overnight, so I'm just saying it may be hard for him to completely stay away. Oh, but I it agree. looks like that's what he's doing right now. He's in position to land body shots, and he hasn't thrown one yet. And, Timmy, you don't want Takush to oversell one, to oversell reaction. That's why I said go to the head, because I've seen Takuchi, the way he's reacting, anything that's mid, that's midsection or down low, he's going to complain about it. So an interesting turn of events, end of five. Mick Conlon, the two-time Olympian, the undefeated top featherweight contender, who now wants to take the path of going after a title at junior featherweight. His comeback fight after a 245-day layoff, now into round six against the recent IBF featherweight title challenger, Sofian Takush. Two point deductions, round four low blows, round five for low blows. So Colin's gotta be careful here. We did have, remember back in June, Jesse Magdaleno, he won by DQ because of excessive low blows being thrown by Yenifel Vicente. But I think that was more, that was purpose. That was it was purposeful. purposeful. I've only seen one That's that I would even call low blow tonight. Isn't. Yeah, this is a little bit different, but you know, he's, he's definitely walking on a tight line right now. And I would stray away from the body because I don't, I wouldn't want to get DQ. Hey, no, fellas, it seemed like the game plan was to fight in the southpaw position and to throw those body shots. I would tell Conlon, go right-handed. Let's look for the right hand. Let's be smart. Let's try to set him up over the top of something. Man, Shakush is in survival mode. He's in survival mode. He's not here to win. He's here to get out of the way, out of harm's way. 
That was a left hand that was to the body thrown there moments ago by Conlon. Takush tries to Joe, come over the top. you can trying to... Yeah, Conlon is trying to think in between combinations, and that's dangerous. That's why I told you he's got to do the best that he can, but he's also got to use his instincts because you don't want to get caught with a crazy shot. Being inside, stopping yourself mid-punch, trying not to throw to the body. So very, very thin line, but he's still throwing right now. He went away from it last round. He's coming back to it in the sixth round. Because if Conlon gets hit with a shot mid-thought, nobody's going to cut him any slack if there's a major upset or a knockdown. So awkward is Takush there when he comes forward offensively, isn't he? Conlon in control, does have the two-point deductions as we come to the end. Start of round seven from the historic York Hall, the BT Sports Studio. Glad you're with us. Live fight action from London. Joe, Dre, Timmy, and Mark. Top-ranked boxing on ESPN. We've got such a busy schedule coming your way. Next week, it is going to be an absolute war in the main event from Vegas on ESPN+. Plus. A later Alvarez against Joe Smith Jr. in a title eliminator. And then in two weeks, we will have the unified junior welterweight champion, Jose Ramirez, defend the BC and BO belts against the number one mandatory, Victor Postal. And, of course, the big news coming out this week, the report that it's a done deal with Vasily Lomachenko and Tiafimo Lopez October 17th, not on pay-per-view on ESPN to unify their titles. Round number seven here with Conlon in control against Takuj. He has a 110 to 44 connect advantage. He's landed 87 of 255 power punches. And to Tim Bradley and Mark's point, there is room for Michael Conlon to step in there right around this point in certain fights. Seventh, eighth round when he's when he's gained control, he's dictated how the fight is gonna be and, and you see your opponent has nothing for you. Takush has nothing for Michael Conlon right now. It's a perfect time to have a high guard, be willing to allow Takush to hit your gloves to open him up and then to unleash and try to land a big shot to get this fight over with inside the distance. Hey Dre, it's funny that you say that because, you know, I have Conlon down as a four star talent. Okay, the reason why he don't have that fifth star is he doesn't have that real punching power. But at the same time, Dre, I wasn't a power puncher. You weren't too much of a power puncher as well. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 but hold up, but hold up, but hold up, Dre. Hold up, let me finish, man. I'm just playing. Let me finish. But you always was able to find a way. You was always able to find a way to get in the inside, rough a guy up, and break him down and get him up out of there, even without having that super raw punching power. And that's the reason why he doesn't have that fifth star. So you did watch the finish to June 17th, 2017 from the Mandalay Bay, Timmy, of Dre's career. Good he to know have, that. He might have missed yes. that one, Joe. He no, might have missed I, I, that one. No, but he found a way. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, shoot. You got more knockouts than I do, Dre. And that's the reason why you're a five-star talent, my friend. Well, thank you, my friend. I, hey, listen, <laughs> if you give out six stars, you may want to hand that to the man from the Bay Area. Round number seven here. <laughs> As Conlon has been in complete control against Takush. Remember, we are working our way to see the return of the Jackal. Carl Frampton will be in against Darren Trainer, who took the fight. Beautiful shot, historic York Holt, the BT Sports Studio. Irish Mick Conlon's landed 75 more punches than Sofian Takush. Of course, Mick Conlon from Belfast. His father is the head coach of the Irish national team. His brother Jamie is one of the most prominent executives in management globally in all boxing. Mick, who started his training early in his career with Manny Robles out in California. Uh, they had a great relationship, but he said there were things I needed to fix, and I wanted to fix them before they got broke. And now he spends his time going back between Northern Ireland, where his wife Shauna and their beautiful children, Lushna and Michael are, to then here in London, where he trains with Adam Booth. And you can see the growth and development and refinement through the years as we have watched the ascent 
of Mick Conlon to get himself into title contention. You know, it's a shame that Conlon can't go down to the body. You know, because that's the way you keep a man still. You want your opponent to stand still, you got to hit him down to the body. But the fact that he got two points already taken from him, you know, he has to stray away from the body work. Now he has to head hunt. And to that point, Timmy, more difficult for him. to that point, to consider how much success he was having to the body. First three rounds, he landed eight body shots in each round. In the fourth round, Remember the end of that, that's where he had the point deduction. He landed 14 body punches in that fourth round. But since then, two, two, six, one. Because he doesn't want to put himself in position where he could possibly be DQ'd. Two point deductions in this fight. Guys, I have to tell you, this got to be tough. This got to be tough. You know, a lot of times in the ring, a lot of things are instinctive. You see the opening, you shoot the shot. You know, Colin has to think before he does now, before he do. So tough for him at this moment. Short right hand on the inside, coming to the end of eight, scheduled for ten, live from London. Well, it's been a dominating performance, but when we set the stage for the night, we all discussed what we wanted to see out of Mick Conlon here as he tries to move his mark to 14-0 and, and contend for a title of 122 pounds. And everybody was in agreement. Got to be spectacular, and you want to see a knockout. Josh Warrington got rid of Takush in two rounds. Perhaps he was heading that way, but then the point deductions with the body shots has him getting away from that excellent body work. And here we are starting round number nine. So two rounds to try to get it done for Mick Conlon to get rid of Takush. Although getting in the rounds, Dre, is probably not a bad thing considering the 245-day layoff. Yeah, the rounds are never a bad thing. I mean, obviously, you know, a knockout against a guy like this who has been knocked out against another champion, you know, is a good look. Um, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a mental thing with Conlon. You know, I found myself in certain fights where I knew I could have got guys out of there after the fact. I went back and watched the tape, and I realized that what verge my coach was calling for calling me to step it up in certain spots and trust my ability in that moment. I could have did it, but while you're in there, sometimes you feel like it's not a safe thing to do. So I just think it's the same thing with Conlon. He's trying to stick to the script that Adam Booth has laid out for him, but in those tougher fights, he's going to have to stand there just long enough to get his respect so he can box like this against upper echelon guys. Well, I think he got his respect right now, and I just think that he can't do what he planned to do, and that's go down to the body. That was the key. I said it from the first round. That was the key. He landed a body shot. I saw how Takush, how he reacted to the body shot, and now he had to veer away from it because of the two points being deducted. So I'm not going to hold him accountable for not getting a knockout if he doesn't get one tonight. I'm not even sure Conlon should even be in this position right now because the first two shots that were called low did not look low to me. And then, you know, I feel like those were an overreaction from the ref. And now he finds himself in this position when he did land a shot. That's the second point taken away from him. And seeing what the coach is doing, he's, he's leaning down in front. He's making it hard for Colin to land a solid body shot. Comes Mick on the attack. He's a veteran of over, you know. Mouthpiece came out, so they'll take the time to wash that off and replace it. 
Yeah, Tim, Takush, you know, it's his 41st fight. Yeah. He, he's a, you know, he's a herky-jerky guy, and as you mentioned, he's in survival mode. It's tough to stop a dude like this, and it's tough to land a clean shot. Yeah. Coming to the end of round number nine. Takush is going to get to the 10th round. Conlon says he's been in search of that knockout. See the tens are on the video boards there in London. A tenth and final round. Can Mick Conlon dismiss Sofian Takuch? Conlon, the Irish sensation, the two-time Olympian, wildly popular fighter back home in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Remember the scene last summer? The outdoor fight tens of thousands coming out what we've seen in new york the reaction's been great too on saint patrick's day and now the fanless COVID protocol atmosphere in london as a right hook lands and then a left hand follows against takush and he's stepping right into that pocket with combinations conla looking strong here two punch combinations trying to get around the guard. effort yeah, he's making an asserted effort to step it up and try to get this stoppage in this last round. Utilizing the southpaw jab. See if he sets up that left hand. Takush now coming forward awkwardly. Is Conlon able to get away with upper head movement? Three punch combination, finish with a right hand to the body. Halfway through round 10, Takush trying to go to the distance. Conlon looking for something special to close the show. Stalking his prey, comes in with a roll, oh, a good sweeping left hand. And Takush trying to wrap up against the ropes, Conlon on the attack. And that's it. Another headshot reigns in, and it's a TKO win for Michael Conlon. The end comes at one minute, 54 seconds of round number 10. Referee Mr. Gray stops the contest. In his opinion, Sofiane Takush in no position to continue. Therefore, the winner remaining undefeated, Michael Conlon. Mick Conlon is now 14 and 0. With eight knockouts, the next time we see him, it'll be at 122 pounds. He wants to fast track to a world title chance there. Speaking of world title opportunities, here's what's coming up the next couple weeks on ESPN+. Plus. Top-ranked boxing on ESPN+, Plus continues on August 22nd. Former